Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about some things happening in boxing. The recent dust-up involving Oscar De La Hoya and Canelo. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now with regard to Hall of Famer Oscar De La Hoya and future Hall of Famer Canelo, I understand some comments were made about avoided opponents. Uh, there were hints at uh, past problems with dependency. You know, let me just say to both guys, um, you're both great fighters. This dust up doesn't help your brand. It doesn't help your sport. I hope both of the guys think it through. Um, I hope both of the guys come up with some kind of uh, private peace accord. Um, I don't. I don't think this is the way to go. Right. Let me also say too that I have no problems with fighters talking trash before a fight with each other. This is a little bit different. This is a major boxing promoter having a dust up with one of the very best pound for pound in the entire sport. Very high profile guys. Uh, they're not going to hop in the ring against each other. So a lot of what's said is going to be unresolved. Um, Given that reality, figure out a way to have a private accord. Again, the dust up doesn't help your brands. It doesn't help your sport. Let's shift gears. UFC's Dana White is picking Tyron Woodley over Jake Paul. He congratulates Paul for taking on a puncher, right? Because Ben Askren really wasn't a puncher for the last fight, right? Nate Robinson really didn't have experience uh, boxing. But, and this is significant for gamblers, my core constituency, Dana White openly admits that Tyron Woodley hasn't been the same for some period of time. Now let's remember, this is a 39-year-old, right? Hasn't been the same for some period of time. And he's hopping in the ring with a guy who's in his mid-twenties. Let's also remember too, Woodley is a puncher, no question about it. But he's not wearing boxing gloves when he throws punches in UFC events, right? When I say boxing gloves, I mean professional prize fighter boxing gloves. Right? He's in there without the gloves. I think it's an open question on whether he's going to have the power in a boxing match that Jake Paul, who hits hard with boxing gloves on, has. Let me also point out, too, that Woodley certainly is a puncher. Right? I have the highlights in my favorites folder here on YouTube for those who want to look at them. Again, though, let's recognize... Woodley's been on a four-fight losing streak, right? The highlights don't include his last four fights, right? Woodley certainly has power, but does he have two-handed power? He throws a great right hand. I've looked at many of his films. I haven't seen the commensurate left hand. What I want people to do is go back a few fights ago. Jake Paul had a fight against another YouTube luminary. And Jake Paul ends that fight on a left hook. I believe Jake Paul has heavy hands. Right? Plural. Right hand and left hand. I think he hits hard with both hands. I think he's going to be more of a problem for Tyron Woodley than does Dana White, right? 
I like Jake Paul in the fight. I have noticed the line has jumped. Paul now is going off at a minus 175. I still think there's value there. Right? Again, he's mid-20s, fighting a guy on a four-fight losing streak who's 39 years old, whose promoter is openly conceding that the guy hasn't looked himself in recent fights. Right? When I see a declining veteran changing sports, who I question whether he has the left hand of his opponent, and he's going to fight a guy who Granted, Jake Paul's not fighting Canelo and Terrence Crawford. I'll concede that. But Jake Paul certainly is dusting off the guys he's fighting. Right? And Jake Paul has shown an ability to pivot, get on his back foot, and still throw power shots. Right? I think Jake Paul is more proficient in boxing than Tyron Woodley, who I understand has sparred in the gym, right? I'm leaning Jake Paul. Let me also say too, I understand some professional prize fighters have come out and have said, hey, I'm picking Tyron Woodley in this fight. Okay, great. That's why it's an event, folks. There are differences of opinion here. But make no mistake, I'm going with the guy in his 20s. The guy who's naturally bigger. I understand, many of you have written that Tyron Woodley had to cut weight to make weight in the UFC and that now he doesn't have to cut weight to fight at 190. Okay, that's fine, but understand, Jake Paul is accustomed to fighting at this weight. It's going to be new for Woodley, whether he cuts weight or not. So I like Jake Paul over Tyron Woodley. We'll see what happens. Finally, you know, everyone interested in the heavyweight division needs to be paying awfully close attention to the Anthony Joshua Alexander Usyk negotiations. Right now, Joshua is one of the marquee fighters on the zone. As you can imagine, the people around Joshua don't want him fighting on any other outlet. Right? They want him on the zone. I believe people also understand that Joshua, if he fights no one, if he vacates the WBO title, he's still the logical opponent for the winner of Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury, right? Both Wilder and Fury in the past have tried to negotiate deals with Anthony Joshua. Neither Wilder nor Fury is the box office king that Anthony Joshua is. Right? Joshua is the person who brings in the fans. Joshua's fights have had larger crowds than the fights of either Wilder or Fury. So understand, Joshua holds some cards here. But Fury and Joshua just got offered a huge amount of money by, I believe it was, Saudi Arabia before, of course, the arbitrator came down in favor of Deontay Wilder. So there are people out there willing to pay huge site fees for big-time heavyweight fights. Understand, if Joshua signs to fight Usyk, that fight is going to have the cash cow of the heavyweight division in it. So interestingly enough, Eddie Hearn, 
whose father, Barry Hearn, by the way, is a Boxing Hall of Famer. Eddie Hearn has flatly said, look, we'll talk with Usyk's people about a fight, but we don't want this going to purse bid. Because understand what that would mean. Right? For the people into game theory. Just think about the possibility of Bob Arrow, who already promotes Tyson Fury, thinking to himself, thinking like a gambler, and thinking to himself, you know what, I can hedge my bets here. Right? Let me, let me hedge my bets here. Let me show up at the purse bid. For Usyk AJ, let me win that purse bid. So if Usyk beats AJ, then even if Deontay Wilder beats my guy Tyson Fury, I'm still in the mix for the next fight. As I said here on earlier videos, I know it's unannounced, but what you have in essence in the heavyweight division right now is a de facto box-off tournament. I think we intuitively know that unless something crazy happens, right, Fan Man or some ridiculous scoring or some Jack Dempsey long count, I think we all know that the winner of Fury Wilder is going to face the winner of AJ Usyk if the second fight takes place. So, deep pocketed repeat players like uh, Bob Arum, could conceivably step in and make a big bet, make a big purse bid play to get the A.J. Usyk fight if Usyk doesn't agree to a deal with Eddie Hearn. Right? At a minimum, just the presence of a Bob Arum or some commensurate promoter might drive up the price of that A.J. Usyk fight. Might cause Eddie Hearn to pay a premium in a fight involving his own fighter. Right, so this is high drama, folks. If you're one of these people like me who likes to look at the business side of boxing, this is as interesting as it gets. Because understand, if AJ vacates, then by definition, any fight he has against the winner of Wilder Fury won't be a unification match. Suddenly, Daniel Dubois, who's trying to get a rematch with Joe Joyce, would be out of luck. Because I believe the WBO would order Usyk to fight Joe Joyce for the WBO title. Suddenly you're getting new people in the mix. Let's remember, Joe Joyce already fought Usyk, right? Look that up in a semi-pro match. Joe Joyce is greatly improved. He's not gonna be completely unfamiliar with what Usyk brings to the table. Right, finally, let me just say this too. I believe Usyk would be one of the worst people for Tyson Fury to fight, right? Understand, Fury can beat some guys. I believe he beats Andy Ruiz just using his legs. He has the coordination, folks. If you're a fighter who can't move around the ring and keep up with Tyson Fury, you're going to lose, right? Make no mistake, too. I think... That's a distinct advantage Fury has over Wilder, right? Wilder doesn't have Fury's fluidity, doesn't have his movement, can't match his volume, throws a jab but doesn't throw a Tyson Fury level jab. But understand, if Fury beats Wilder and is forced to face the winner of AJ Usyk, and if we get the upset in that fight. And that fight should have upset alert all over the page. Right? If Olympic gold medalist Usyk 
beats Anthony Joshua. Then you're talking about a guy who's as coordinated as Tyson Fury. Then you're talking about a guy who can move, won't be phased if Fury decides to go southpaw can fight inside or outside, can fight going forward, can fight backing up. Right then, that fight becomes a chess match. Right, so let's just say we have far less visibility, far less visibility than normal right now in the heavyweight division. Right? What we have is the threat of Eddie Hearn, that his guy is going to vacate. Think about this. His guy is going to vacate unless Usyk agrees to a deal on his terms. To the boxing press, I hope if you're interviewing any of, let's say, the top four heavyweights right now, Wilder, Tyson Fury, AJ, Usyk. I hope they're asked tough questions, right? If you're questioning Anthony Joshua, you have to say, AJ, you fought so hard to pick up all of these belts. We heard so much about how you wanted to be undisputed. Right, something that hasn't happened in the heavyweight division since Lennox Lewis, and let's face it, people sense that Lennox Lewis's relationship with Anthony Joshua isn't that brotherly. Right, there isn't that warm, loving feeling that comes from, you know, a young guy looking at a guy who was undisputed out of the United Kingdom. That's where Lewis fought out of. Right, you don't get the feeling that this is big brother, little brother, that it's a family type thing. You get the feeling that AJ wants to be undisputed, right, so he can eclipse Lennox Lewis, right? At least match what Lennox Lewis accomplished. At least that's the narrative we were being sold. As they negotiated the Fury-AJ fight, isn't it? Well, now suddenly, AJ, who would benefit personally from a purse bid, right? If some person says, hey, I'll pay a $75 million site fee, and you're one of the fighters involved in the fight, you're like, hey, sounds good to me. Extra money in my bank account? Thank you very much. You know, you would think AJ would step forward here and say, whoa, whoa, Eddie, come on now. You know, if we can't reach a deal with Usyk, let's do the purse bid. That's if he's truly interested in being undisputed and he wants top dollar. How do we get in a place where his promoter is saying, hey, we'll give up a title. And I've seen great fighters do that before. Riddick Bo, those are belt in the garbage. But how do we reach the point where the WBO mandatory wants to fight him, right? The WBC and the lineal, they're caught up in their own unification match or third fight, right? Obviously, there's no dispute. Tyson Fury is a WBC and lineal. So one would think Anthony Joshua would say, hey, I'm going to make this Usyk fight happen. I might as well fight Usyk now. <laughs> right? I mean, if I beat Usyk, then I beat the winner of Fury Wilder. Even online yahoos like Dwyer are going to have to concede I'm the top floor. I'm the best in the heavyweight division because, of course, by then, I'd be undisputed. To the fight fans out there, especially the Joshua crowd. Why is this complicated? 
Why isn't Joshua's team saying, okay, look, we'll try to reach a deal with Usyk. If not, we'll go to Perspit. Why isn't that happening? <laughs> I mean, folks, Usyk was undisputed himself. Usyk remains unbeaten. Isn't the narrative right now in boxing that Usyk didn't look overwhelming against Chaz Witherspoon, a fight many have forgotten, at heavyweight? According to Dylan White, didn't have power. Didn't have power against Derek Chisora. Now, if you hold AJ's belts and they then say, hey, you have to fight this guy, isn't your response, hey, man, sounds good to me? Then, of course, you're going to say, hey, this is going to purse bid. <laughs> isn't your response at that point, what? I get to fight this guy who lacks power. And they're going to pay me extra money to do it? Why isn't that happening, folks? Read between the lines. The reason it's not happening is because I believe insiders privately know that Alexander Usyk style-wise, Usyk, more fluid than AJ, is a tough matchup for AJ. Right? If Usyk beats AJ, we might never get Tyson Fury against AJ. Never. Never ever. Right? Because then at that point, unless there's a rematch clause for Usyk AJ, Usyk might want to pivot. He's in his 30s, folks. Might want to pivot and say, okay, look, I have these belts. To the winner of Fury Wilder, I want those belts too. Right? Think about how different boxing's going to be. Think about how different all of us think about the history of heavyweight boxing. If you have a guy who was undisputed at cruiser, who then becomes undisputed at heavy, understand Alexander Usyk theoretically is two fights away from that distinction. So to the boxing press, I'm hoping we get some old school type journalism, right? Boxing journalists saying, hey, AJ, why aren't you fighting Usyk? <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, AJ, Usyk didn't exactly knock out Derek Chisora, right? Why, <laughs> why aren't you taking that fight? Why is there a hang up over money? Right? If this goes to purse bid, you're not going to vacate the WBO title, are you? And then deprive boxing fans like us of a unification match because all of us watching this video know, I believe we all know, that the guys in the other fight, Fury and Wilder, they'd leap at the opportunity leap at the opportunity to fight the winner of AJ versus Usyk. Right? None of those guys are going to be throwing any belts in the garbage. You know that. Neither of those guys is going to say, hey, this better not go to purse bid or I'm out of here. You know that's not going to happen. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I keep hearing that I'm a hater of certain fighters, right? One of them is Anthony Joshua, right? I'd love to hear from those fans. Why is there hesitation to fight a guy who, according to Scuttlebutt, struggled against Derek Chisora? Why is there hesitation to annex the WBO title? when your guy was prepared to fight for the WBC title, for the lineal title. Why the hesitation? Explain it to us in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.